Hi, Siobhan Walsh here, um, Technical Tillage Journalist with AgriLand, and I'm joined on the line by Donald Maloney, the Grain Manager with Lanbia. Um, so welcome, Donald. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Siobhan. Hi. Um, so, Donald, um, I suppose we want to give people a bit of advice um, at the minute about forward selling. So we're noticing lately grain prices, wheat is, is, a, little, uh, is a little bit volatile, barley is going down. Um, where do you see grain prices going as we head into the season and towards harvest? It's a the, the million dollar question, I suppose. Yeah, so you start with the easy questions. But um, <laughs> uh, look, I suppose uh, we start with wheat uh, because it's probably a slightly more positive positive story. Uh, if you look at the moment, um, we obviously were aware that the wheat area in this part of the world is back significantly, especially Western Europe in general, particularly the UK and France. Um, there's been dry weather across um a lot of Europe and particularly southern Russia, they're a big, big uh, wheat exporter. They'll have something like 80 million tons. Um, plus, there's a probably bigger demand at the moment for flour and bakery products. And so wheat is, uh, we'd be positive enough that wheat would at least hold its value. Uh, that said, I suppose it's at good values or relatively good values at the moment. So maybe people should be taking a piece of that rather than holding all their stock until harvest to sell. Barley is, it's hard to be optimistic about barley. Uh, I suppose barley has to compete directly with maize as uh, for inclusion as a feed ingredient. Um, uh, it looks like maize will be very plentiful and quite cheap. The ethanol industry has collapsed. Uh, the ethanol industry in the US has collapsed and that takes about 40% of the maize there. It looks like the US will have a big, big crop compared to last year. Uh, so look, if there's lots of maize around, it's likely to pressure uh, the price of barley um, and pressure below where it is at the moment. So be reasonably optimistic that wheat might hold its value, but I'd still, I'd probably be selling a bit of it and barley, I think I'd be selling because I'd be afraid it's going to go lower. And I suppose that's the key message. You know, traditionally in Ireland, farmers don't forward sell. And in Lambia, you've been very proactive. You send out prices um, nearly every week at this, I think at, at this time of the year. Um, so you're encouraging farmers to sell. So maybe you might might explain a bit on, on how that can balance people's risk over the season. Yeah, well, I suppose what, it, what we hope it's doing is giving the farmer the option to make their own price and to uh, be more in control of their destiny. Like traditionally, people would wait until harvest and all their grain was sold in one day. And for us, I suppose all the grain was bought in one day, which is, you know, there's a huge risk in that as well. Um, so I suppose by looking at the market throughout the year, um, and by exercising an option to sell at various times. It's not about, you know, transferring the sale on one day in the harvest to one day sometime before the harvest. That's not yeah. what it's about. It's about spreading your sales over a, a longer period and hopefully spreading your risk as well. And I suppose, you know, the, do, the two key things I would see that people need to know is where does the price at the moment compare to the long term average and where does it um, compare to or what is your own cost of production? So. Every farmer should be able to work out or should know their cost of production per tonne of grain, see how that compares to what the price and offer is, and also see how the price and offer compares to what the long term average might be. And doing some work on this, the long term long term average over 13 or 14 years for feed barley is about 140 euros a tonne. If you take out the high priced years out of that, which was 2007, 2012 and 18, it drops back to about 130 euros a tonne. And for wheat, the long term average is about 147 or 8 euros a tonne. So wheat price at the moment is a good bit above average. Barley is probably a bit, little bit below average. But, you know, I say it's prices are close enough to average in in a year when it looks like supply is going to be probably above average, especially for barley. So. Yeah. So the key there is people need to know their cost of production. They need to set their mark and decide, OK, if the price is is at is at this level I'm going to sell and they have to be happy with their decision and sell and as you I've heard you say move on from there. Yeah I think it's like a lot of things in life when you make the decision once you're comfortable that the decision you're making is the best decision at the time then it's always the best decision regardless of what happens after so I think you just you make the decision and move on but I think you need to know uh, why you're selling and what you're selling against. That's why I say you need to know the cost of production, whether you're making money at the price that's an offer uh, or at least breaking even. Um, and then, you know, you could, you know, farmers are often, or some farmers are supposed to fond of saying like, you know, the price isn't good enough to, to, to cover my costs or to give me a decent margin. But 
the market has no sentiment, I suppose. You know, the market is the market, and uh, I suppose you need to take a view of where we think the market is going to go. And it might, if it's the best that's an offer at the time, then and and the best that might be an offer for a while, then that's the best you can do. And I would say at least sell a bit. And I think go back to what I said earlier. I think it, little and often is the approach to forward selling, not trying to sell, not trying. None of us can second guess where the market is going to go or whether it's at the top of the market or not. So I think selling little and often is the best, uh, the, the key to maximize, you know, um, minimizing your risk and maximizing your opportunity. So. Yeah, you're building up that average over time. I suppose the big the big fear, I think, with Irish farmers and forward selling is that they'll miss a good price later on. It's more the fear of the price going up. But yeah, the, you, the you have a lot of data there showing, showing yeah. um, prices throughout the year. I do. And if you look, I suppose, at prices over the years, you know, uh, um, there, there is a slide to show that we're probably in some kind of a trend where you have a high price once every four or five years and in between then are you know lower prices and we're probably this year again looking unfortunately it looks to say we're looking at a lower price year particularly for barley yeah. now we're in a completely different time i suppose uh, with COVID 19 and all that goes with it but again that is going to weaken demand i suppose and yeah. Generally, you don't get high prices or high price years unless you have some major disruption to supply caused by drought or excessively bad weather or something like that. And there's none of that in the offing at the moment. Maybe a bit on wheat. Uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on wheat over the coming months, particularly across Europe. But uh, for grain in general, it looks like the world will be generally well supplied this year. So um, you'd have to think it's not going to be a high price year at the moment. Yeah. And um, you know, we well, yeah, sorry, I was going to also say, sorry, Sean. Um, also say, yeah, we looked at say the, within Landby, the people that have forward sold over the last number of years, yeah. you know, five out of the last six years, it has paid a dividend for them in terms of uh, the price, the average price, uh that barley, for example, has been sold at, has been generally a good bit better than the harvest price. The exception was 2018, where prices shot up uh, during the summer coming into the harvest. But you could see that coming in advance and there was little enough stuff sold in 2018. But in the other years, uh, forward selling paid well, um, you know, generally by something like 12, 14, 15 euros a ton versus the harvest price. And I suppose one thing I would say is that the vast majority of people are generally not sorry for forward selling, but are sorry for not forward selling. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just looking at some of your data there. Like in 2019, the differential between the average forward sold price and the harvest price was 26 euro. So, you know, it's it's a big difference. And if people are doing it, as you said, throughout the year in small small little bits of tonnage, it can make a big difference to the to the end price. Yeah, and there's plenty of evidence to show that uh, you know again probably four years out five the price of the harvest is is the poorest price of the year or one of the poorest prices in the year so and that's when the bulk of grain uh, comes on the market i suppose so you'd be trying to avoid selling most of your grain at harvest is generally uh you know and people will point to the years like 2018 or 12 or you know when it when the harvest price was very very good but i say it's more the exception than the rules yeah exactly they're the exception so um i suppose Final pieces of advice, Donald, for farmers. Lambia um, are sending out prices there every week. Um, they should be maybe taking more interest in those prices coming out, should they? Yeah, well, look, uh, we our policy would be, I suppose, to put a, um, a text price out. We send a separate uh, grain price text to green and dry growers, uh, depending on uh, <coughs> the enterprise they're in. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to send that at least once a week from now to harvest. Um, the price is generally, it's, it, the price is a, a reflection of the market. You know, we don't know any more than anybody else, I suppose, about where the price might go. But uh, all we're doing is reflecting the market. In very simple terms, the way it works is we get a price from brokers on a day. We take our processing margin or assembly cost out of that and then yeah. pass the price on the farmer. You can argue about the assembly cost and whatever, but uh, at the end of the day, we're purely reflecting the price that, that's out in the market on any particular day. So whether the price is a high price or low price, our involvement in the middle and our assembly cost remains the same or essentially the same. So uh, again, as I say, it's just a reflection of the market that's out there and we'll continue to do that. And hopefully, like, you know, people want in more information, contact our business manager, contact me directly mm -hmm. uh, and we're happy to talk to people. But it's not about trying to steal a march on the market or steal a march on the farmer. It's, I suppose, trying to help people make the best decision and hopefully in the long term, that's better for all of us. 
Yeah, and I think the text messages have definitely resulted in in more more people forward selling. We were talking to Atlanta Agronomist last week, Jane Smith, and she said that um, a lot more people had taken up offers last week, maybe as a result of the price going down. But people are definitely um, starting to take more interest when they're getting that price every week. So I suppose last pieces of advice, Donal, um, would they be to you know set your benchmark, know your cost of production. Um, have a mark to sell at, and I suppose be happy then with your your decision and move on from it. Yeah, I suppose uh, certainly know your cost of production and and where you're happy to sell at. Uh, you know what you consider say the the lowest point that you would sell at, and then see how the whatever is an offer compares to that. Um, but uh, and try and do it enough, and don't be trying to second guess the market and uh, and where things might end up. Um, what is spreading the average is what counts at the end of the day, not any individual price. It's the average of what you have when all your corn is sold is what yeah. is what the most important thing. Yeah. Okay. Well thanks very much for joining us, Donald. You're welcome, Sean. Thank you.